because the fallacy taught him that, well, he was totally depraved, and he had this dual nature, and he was stained with this original sin nonsense, and he couldn't do any better. So what did he do? Well, inevitably, he couldn't do any better. He remained depraved. He remained in his sins. And that's pretty much what happened, again, with, with few exceptions. So they've continued then with this mess. And we can look back kind of with 2020 hindsight, with crystal clarity, and see that these are the people that have suppressed the truth and righteousness and turned the truth of God into a lie, which we're fighting today. We're fighting the, the, the collection of all this in our present day, unprecedented amount of deception and lies at every turn, everywhere you look. It is so hard for people to come out of this mess and to unravel all this false teaching. That's why repentance takes such a long time. See, even with the best of intentions, you know, then and now, we've had missionaries, we've had workers, we have people giving their lives, they still take this horribly marred version of Christianity to the world and present it as a provision to man under the assumption that he's totally depraved and he has no ability to obey God, so there has to be this substitution or provision made on his behalf, and that was he, that's what he receives. Instead of a repentance and faith proven by deeds coming out of his sin through a season of godly sorrow and conviction. See, again, all that originated in ancient Rome. One guy, one, 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 of, the, one of our brothers in our study calls them many followers. Because of Manichaeism is where the idea of the dual nature in this sin nature came from. It was, a, it was from a pagan origin out of ancient Persia. So, in a way, they're all Manny followers today because they think they got this dual nature lurking in their flesh and that, that they can't have no power over it. Of course, it's been called all kinds of things. It's been called original sin and moral depravity and dual nature. It's been called all kinds of things throughout history and defined and redefined and explained and all that kind of stuff. But it all boils down to one thing, limited ability or eliminating, eliminating ability. That's what it all boils down to. So the, these people with these great intentions in the religious system dedicate themselves to a life of sacrificial service to God. As we've pointed out, ministering the love of Jesus to the people while they ignore bringing them out of their sin. They think that's the expression of love of Christ. We ignore what they're doing. We just tell them about Jesus and then they'll fall, fall on their face and magically be transformed without any effort put forth on themselves to get clear of their sins and the deeds that are worthy of repentance. But they can't preach that because they believe in this, this, this nonsense that descended upon them from thousands of years of fallacy. But yet these people are totally without aware. They're oblivious totally oblivious to what they're doing. It's just like it says in Revelation 13, you have the image of a lamb with the la speak the language of the dra dragon. That was a false image that everybody would bow to. That's what they're bound to in Babylon. You know, Babylon just means confusion in the scriptures. And that's what we have today, this mass confusion. Everybody bound to this false image of Jesus, you know, in the system, presented to them in the manner that, you know, he died for their sins and he's their substitution. He did it all for them. And then they receive the mark, which is, of course, their own lustful eye of the flesh, and their pride of life, and their lust for the world and all the things in the world. And that's what they pursue after. So that's, that's the premise for which they took this gospel to the people. Even though we have a lot of good work done throughout the Reformation and a lot of people that really tried to get these people to do what's right, it was still all underscored with these fallacies. So the people in the great revivals and the wonderful awakenings and the millions of people coming to Christ in droves, that all fell flat on its face if you really study it hard, which, which I did. I studied it real, real well, the, the journals and all. There was no Reformation. There might have been a renaissance, for sure, coming out of the Dark Age into a, into a time of knowledge, of great knowledge, printing press, all that, the inventions. But there was no reformation back to apostolic truth, for the most part. It didn't exist. Only a few pockets of it, and they were severely persecuted in the 1500s, 1600s, and on. 
like in Germany and France and different places, they, they were severely persecuted. They were killed and tortured, skinned alive and burned and all, of, all the rest of it by Calvin and Luther and all them heretics. Because they all went on their doctrine, originated from the biggest heretic of all time. Oh, Augustus back here. Oh, Augustine, however you want to pronounce it. So these people then testify of all this, and they think even today that most of the world's been converted, of course, by the masses of people that are, that are coming to Jesus. All they're coming to is a provision, a fallacy, that traces back to pagan Rome. So, in a way, you know, their, their, their message is right on track. Their program. It's right on track with this fallacy in the suppression of the truth that's been going on for all this time. And it's got Augustine's footprints all over it. But they think he was the greatest guy that ever lived, along with the many, many pundits that came out of the, the Reformation, and of course present day ones that mimic these guys in the Reformation. So the wonderful awakenings were not really as, as wonderful as they seem. Because look what we are. Well, look where we are today. The Nazarenes, the Holiness preachers, the Wesleyans, all the ones that tried to break away from that lawless doctrine of the Puritanical Calvinism tulip, tried to redefine those things, ended up preaching the same thing that man was saved in his sins, and could never stop sinning. So what do we have today? We have this mess on our hands. So everything's right on track, if you look at it that way. They might have toned down original sin a little bit, call it limited ability or inbred nature or something lurking in their flesh or something like that. But as a result, the entire world has been snowed under with the original fallacy. The original sin, the original fallacy in many forms. And it's people are just invited then to receive Jesus based on this premise that they're incapable of obedience to God, and in some manner, they're hindered to ever obey or stop sinning. Some say they're morally depraved, some say they're inbred, have limited ability, but it's all, it's all the same thing. So, God, in essence, then, had to provide man with a provision instead of repentance to life. And for centuries, they've been preaching it this way, that he's incapable of deeds worthy of repentance, as the Scripture constantly says over and over again, let the wicked man forsake his ways, let the unrighteous man his thoughts, come clean with God, wash your hands, you sinners, cleanse your hearts, you double-minded. All those things just fall by the wayside under this inability fallacy. So you got to be saved first in your sins, in some manner, whatever they prescribe and under their denomination or their theology, before you can produce any deeds that are acceptable to God, but you still remain the wretched man. Filthy rags, all the rest of it. You still remain that. Well, why is that? Well, go read the Westminster. You'll find out. They think sin humbles you. They think you've fallen into your grievous sins, your sins that will disqualify you from the kingdom, according to the Scriptures. They think that humbles you instead of hardens you. They've got it all backwards. You can spell that backwards. That's what they've done. They've reversed the whole thing, all of Scripture. So everything they teach is opposite of the scriptures, but almost universally accepted as the truth based on this Reformation. Augustine did a Reformation to the present day. That's where it all came from. And like I said, with an enlightened understanding of human ability and free will, those of us that have escaped this thing can look back with the clarity and see why the system of Christianity is in the mess it is today and has had such minimal effect on the moral decay of society worldwide for, for generations. Missionaries and church pundits, they go around for the past 500 odd years telling people they're morally depraved, they can't obey God. And then they expect them to live right after they accept this imaginary provision that Christ made on the cross. So what's the wonder that this present generation then has inherited this antichrist system with no love of the truth that takes pleasure in unrighteousness. Well, 2 Thessalonians is fulfilled. 
The strong delusion has descended upon them because they loved not the truth and took pleasure in unrighteousness, the unrighteous doctrines of men that do not produce godliness but produce unrighteousness and just cloaked with a phony or a proxy righteousness that they think they magically receive. That's what everybody tells them, almost, almost universally. So that's what's happened here. Instead of the deeds worthy of repentance, it's an apology for being sinful. Instead of faith, it's faith alone. Faith in deeds, faith working by love, faith purifying the heart of sin, having victory over the sin of flesh and the devil, it's faith alone. Human righteousness is then deemed impossible. It's filthy rags. So doing what's right is righteousness, like 1 John says, he who does what is right is righteous, is cast to the wind with everything else. Even when they're in Christ, they can't entirely stop their vile sins, the sins that would disqualify them from the kingdom again. Listed in the scriptures, let no one deceive you, he that does these things will not inherit the kingdom. Oh, they try to get into the practice and they say, well, that means 